Thinks he can tell us a whole lot about Mike Malone, and that is Jerry Reynolds. Jerry, welcome to the Sports Show with Woody and Les. Well, thanks, Les, Woody. Uh, great to be with you guys. And, yeah, I... I guess if there's such a thing as a Sacramento Kings lifer, it's me, and uh, <laughs> uh, and certainly I, I really am a big fan of, uh, of Michael Malone. I, I think you guys got a got a terrific young coach. I really do, no question. It was a mistake to let him go uh, here. Uh, I haven't said that. I think obviously the Kings feel very fortunate to have a Hall of Fame coach and George Carl, which you guys know very well. So you know, hopefully it'll work out for both. Jerry, what can we expect from Mike Malone as far as style of play? You know, we hear a lot, but we don't really know. We're too busy watching the Nuggets and not watching the, the Sacramento Kings a lot. So, so tell us what we can expect. What is his game day demeanor? How does he manage games? Uh, can, he, can he run a good pace? You know they want to run pace here. Yeah, I, I think he can. I mean, I, I think basically he, he really does have a defensive uh, focus, and I think he'll uh, – improve your team's defense right away. I mean, I, I think he was just uh, remarkable that way, and, and he's a straight shooter. You know, he's one of those guys that players like to play with because uh, he'll tell them how it is. Uh, they may not like it all the time or agree with it, but there won't be any uh, misunderstandings. And, uh, you know, I think that he played a, probably some people would like to play him, had him play a little faster game here, but the, the truth is it was a center driven offense with uh, DeMarcus Cousins and and you know wisely uh, he utilized the talent that he had and I think that's quite honestly all a coach can do is motivate his players as best he can and utilize the talent that he has in some cases when you don't have a lot uh, you have to play different styles. Jerry this is Woody Page uh, thank you for joining us I wish they had named you the coach I loved you when you were a coach. <laughs> <laughs> well, Woody, I'm, I'm very thankful they didn't I I think I've been punished enough in that regard. <laughs> yeah oh you've okay. seen the Nuggets roster. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, well I think both both teams have have obviously a lot to prove and, and you know I mean in the West it's it's tough to move up but I think both are capable with uh, you know different coaching uh, guys in place and, and a summer to make some changes. I, I think there's some, you know, can be good days ahead for sure. If you were coaching at altitude and you coached at altitude here against the Nuggets, uh, would would you not? I'm trying trying not to put this as a would not you, but would you want to make it a fast paced Warriors kind of offense? And he did do that as an assistant coach. He was part of that involvement in, in, in Golden State. So, I mean, is that the right way to go? The concern uh, with George Carl was that he, his teams weren't playing good enough defense. What do you do with the team here? Well, I do think, yeah, I agree with you, Woody. I, I think that that's the first thing you would uh, hope you could do because I think that's a real advantage there. And, and I think with uh, Ty Lawson and Fareed, these are guys that are made for running. And uh, so they're key guys, and that's how you, I think, get the most out of those guys. So I would assume that, uh, and as you said, uh, uh, Michael understands the running game. You know, he's been assistant uh, several places that, that had good running games. I, I think it was the case here. We, we really did not have the personnel at the time he took over uh, to be a consistently good running team. I mean, uh, you know, you can you can run, but if you got nowhere to go and how to get there, it's not going to be very successful. Yeah. And uh, but I, I think what he'll do is, is try to try to have a consistent, uh, fast pace and and really improve the defense. Yeah. And of course, the better the defense is, the more times you get to run. Uh, Jerry, to follow up on that, uh, you obviously are a lot smarter about basketball than I am. But I've I've covered the NBA for 50 years, so I followed a bit of it. There were a lot of successful teams that ran that didn't have a center that participated in the fast break. And that's the one thing that I keep hearing about. Well, he had DeMarcus Cousins, so he couldn't run. But Bill Russell wasn't a runner. Uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar didn't run the floor. I'm just wondering if you could explain to me, as someone who is smarter than me, why it was they weren't able to push the pace a little bit more, even with DeMarcus? You know, I think I think uh, that's a fair question, and I think you, they probably could have done a little more. But I also think part of it is the rest of the personnel. You know, the guard line very uh, inexperienced, uh, really did not have uh, a consistent guard line at all, and and I think that uh, very difficult to to run consistently. You know, when you don't have good guards consistently uh, playing well or and good deep shooters because you. Part of the thing you want to do is run and push the ball and 
and get some of those easy kickouts in the corner. And, and of course, when you have guys in a corner who can't shoot it, it really doesn't help much. Our guest is former Kings coach and general manager, current commentator Jerry Reynolds. This portion of the big stuff brought to you by Grand Prix Motorsports. Jerry, we had a problem uh, with the previous coach here. Brian Shaw had a tendency to um, say things that, that ticked off his players. Sometimes he just plain threw them under the bus. Mike Malone and his relationship with his players in Sacramento. Was it good? You expect it to be good here? Oh, it's great here. Is actually great here, and I, you know, I've been around every coach that's been here, and I, I'd have to say he probably, you know, had the best locker room rapport of, of anyone. Uh, I, and that includes Rick Adelman or, or whoever, you know. And I, I think, uh, yeah, I think that the players will really enjoy him. And and like I say, he'll he'll t tell them some things they don't uh, want to hear on a in the locker room on a personal basis, but uh, he'll never throw them under the bus. And uh, you know he'll cover for him. Uh, you know, and and I think that he had a great relationship with Demarcus, which is not easy to do, to be quite honest. <laughs> and uh, and uh, maybe uh, maybe one of the miracles of modern times. I don't know, yeah. but uh, yeah, I, I think uh, I, I think those will not be a problem at all. Sure. You know, I mean, I think it probably Michael will be the first to tell you that there'll be a couple of players that won't be thrilled with him. And uh, I think most of us, like Wood, has followed the league for a long time, know that uh, you're always going to have two or three players that don't like you. The key is to make sure it's the th two or three that ain't very good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that are, don't, don't have de guaranteed contracts. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> yeah. Let me shift on you. Uh, what do the Cavaliers have to do tonight differently in order to get this series back to Golden State? That's a great question. I, I, first of all, I don't, I don't think they're good enough, to be honest. But since they do have LeBron, you you got to say, well, they got a chance, and uh, he is the best player in the world. And I, if I had, if David Blatt asked for my suggestions, which he wouldn't, I would say this: I, I would get Timothy Mozgov on the floor. I mean, we, we, you guys know it. I know. It. I mean, Mozgov's not a great player, but but the truth is, he may be their second best player or third best. And and I mean, when you got a team with limited talent. I don't think you want to be trying to worry about matching up with the other team. You better get your best players on the floor as much as you can. And uh, if, I mean, I'm kind of a simple person, but it seems like to me if you if you're doing that, whatever chance you got to win, it's better if you're getting your best players on the floor as much as you can. Well, Jerry, we know you have an appointment. We really appreciate you joining the show, and uh, and thanks for the insight on Mike Malone. Well, thank you guys. Anytime, and I think you're really gonna gonna enjoy Coach Malone, and I, we we all wish him the best, except for four times a year. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Jerry. Yeah. We'll talk to you soon. Well, if he finishes just seventy-eight and four. Yeah, seventy-eight and four would be okay. <laughs> I think I think Nuggets fans would be happy with that. Portion of the big stuff brought to you by Grand Prix Motorsports. They're your source for the original motorcycle. That's Indian motorcycles. So check out the newest line of Indian bikes at Grand Prix Motorsports. They're located on County Line in Santa Fe. And take a look at Fred, who's really enjoying his bike.